loud budgeting. What the heck is that? Hi, if you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. Loud budgeting. It's a new trend in budgeting. We had never heard of it until about a week and a half ago. We read an article on it and we thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. So we decided to talk to you about loud budgeting and how it may be something that is a good thing that could help you save more money and stick to your financial goals. And here all this time, I thought loud budgeting was when I bought something I shouldn't have bought. That is not the same thing. <laughs> so what exactly is loud budgeting? We'd love to know in the comment section, had you ever heard of this new trend? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? Loud budgeting. We read an article in Money Magazine. I'm just going to read directly from the article. On 2024 in out lists, Quiet luxury has been replaced by loud budgeting, a new concept in which you make your frugal mindset obvious. It's not that I don't have enough, it's I don't want to spend. This is the creator, Lucas Battle, right? He's a young man about 25 years old. He put out a TikTok video, explained his whole idea of loud budgeting. It caught on, it's got a couple million views over on TikTok. Uh, he said in another clip, it's, sorry, I can't go out to dinner. I've got $7 a day to live on. So it sounds like it's explaining to other people why you can't go out with them, hopefully so that they'll understand. But it also sets it firmly in you so that you're not overspending your budget. You know, trends like this are always interesting to me because the first thing that comes to our mind is, all right, it's a trend, which means it could be here today, gone tomorrow. And the yeah. next thing occurred to us is, is this really something that can or should be used as a money-saving technique? We're going to go through some pros as we see it and also some cons, so stick with us. If you'd like to read that Money Magazine article on this subject, Hope's going to leave a link in the description of this video so you can take a look at it. So why does this loud budgeting technique, why does this even fit our definition of frugality? Because for us, frugality has always been that you choose when, where, and how you're going to spend your money so that you can have money available yeah. to spend on the things that are most important to you. And to mm -hmm. us, this new trend does indeed fit that definition of frugality. So what could possibly be bad about it and what's so good about it? You know, Hope and I have been subject to our budget for a very long time. We raised four sons on the budget, and we had a lot of friends. And a lot of opportunities came up in our social circle to spend money on doing extracurricular kind of things that Hope and I really didn't have in our budget. In other words, it wasn't in our money plan. Mm -hmm. And so we had to kind of work with our friends to let us know this isn't a part of how we do things, but we appreciate the fact that you can do these things. So by definition, we've been loud budgeters for a really, really long time. What's so good about loud budgeting? It helps you to be in charge of your own money yeah. plan. Yeah. And it does help you to keep on track because you are saying it out loud. Yes. That's what's so great about loud budgeting. The loud part, the part where you are communicating deliberately to others. I have a money plan and here's what that money plan is. Anytime you're able to use more of your senses, that's why we tell mm -hmm. you when you have goals, you don't keep them here. You write them down. You say them out loud. You print them out. You put them where you can see yes. them. Yeah. Why? And you track your progress. Why do you do all that? because it uses as many of your senses on a daily basis as possible, and it helps to keep that first and foremost in your mind. You know, what I see about loud budgeting is that it's not an excuse that mm -hmm. you're going to give to other people as to why you can't spend the money. It's a declaration of your plan mm -hmm. that you've worked out very carefully how you're going to allocate your money. It does allow for some built-in accountability. Mm -hmm. If you're telling your friends, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've used all my recreation money this month. Let's plan for dinner next month because I've already spent all that money. Then your friends are going to go, wait, so you have a budget for this kind of thing? 
and they are going to then keep you on track with your own ad admitted goals that you have just stated very firmly to them. No doubt that would work very well if you have frugal friends. Mm -hmm. They'll understand why you're doing exactly what you're doing because they're doing basically the same thing. Only they might have budgeted some money to go out to eat with, whereas maybe we've already spent our money that month. So they don't really know where we're at in that particular part of the plan. Your other friends who don't do this at all, they may not understand, but they will, mm -hmm. if, they, if they're good friends of yours, yeah. they'll accept what you're doing. And to be clear, not all of our friends are frugal and not no. all of them were on the same like trajectory with money. <laughs> and I'm, I'm willing to bet that more than a time or two, they kind of went, I just can't believe that they are doing this. <laughs> uh, but having said that, even though they didn't necessarily agree with us, they were very supportive of us. And that's what's important. Y'all, your friends don't need to agree with you, but they do need to be supportive of you. And there's a huge difference there. Uh, number four, it is a positive reinforcement factor. Hope has a really good potty training example <laughs> okay. that falls in line with this. I'm not sure where she's going with it, but she's got a plan here, so let's hear what she's got to say. All right, guys, just flow with me, okay? <laughs> this example works. I told Larry, I said it's positive reinforcement. Anybody who has potty trained a two-year-old knows what I'm saying. Every time that that toddler gets anywhere near that potty, sits on that potty, looks at that potty, does anything on that potty, you as a parent are going, that is great, that's fantastic. You keep going, you're doing a great job. And part of what happens with loud budgeting is you are able to say, sometimes repetitively, this is the trajectory that I'm on. And your friends can say, wow, that's really great. That's really great. Do you see that positive reinforcement? Yeah. It gives you an opportunity to hear yourself saying it out loud again and again, because that's going to help keep you on track. But then if you have friends who are supportive of you, who are also saying, you're doing a fantastic job, there's that positive reinforcement. Loud budgeting also gives you a tool, so to speak, in your toolbox mm -hmm. to stay on the plan that you and your spouse, or maybe if you're single, you yourself yeah. have set up. Remember, you spend a lot of time working with every bit of mm -hmm. what you're going to do with your dollars and how carefully you're going to allocate your funds. And you don't want to just mm -hmm. blow that by going out to eat all of a sudden, maybe two or three times a month. Uh, so I see it as a tool. You can explain to people, this is why that I'm doing what I'm doing by not going out this particular night. We are huge fans of having a lot of tools in your frugal toolbox. Yes. Having said that, loud budgeting should not be the only tool that you have in your frugal toolbox. Here's another pro of loud budgeting. It gives you an opportunity to share your wins with your finances in a way that's more organic. So not many of us, you know, call, well, okay, so we've done this. We've called our friends up. They know us really well. Say, hey, look what we did. But normally you're not going to go to a friend and start talking about money. It's usually not the first thing that comes out of your mouth, talking about how you're saving money and what your goals are. But when you are sharing with them, this is where I'm at and this is where I'm headed and this is why I'm doing this. It's very organic and it sort of fits in with your lifestyle and who you are and what your relationship is like with them. You know, a lot of our friends we've known for 30 to 40 years, so they know us really well. If you're meeting new people, it may take a little while to kind of get them introduced to the style of your living. Now, before we go on to the cons of loud budgeting, if you're enjoying what you're hearing as far as the pros <laughs> of loud budgeting are concerned, could you do us a super big favor? Could you scroll up, hit that like button for us because it lets YouTube know you'd like to see more video content just like this. And if you're not subscribed to our channel and you like this kind of content, subscribe and you'll get this kind of content two times in a week. We do videos on frugality. Let's talk about some drawbacks, otherwise known as cons, as opposed to the pros of loud budgeting. Here's the first one that I see. 
loud budgeting as far as going to your casual friends mm -hmm. and explaining to them why you're doing things. To have them be a part of a support group is not necessarily a good thing. For one, if they're just casual friends, they're not going to be that interested in understanding everything about you. They just want to go out and have a good time. I think for the accountability factor, you need to set up some really good frugal friends that understand your lifestyle and your style of budgeting who will come in and kind of undergird you and support exactly what you're doing. Here's the second drawback and that is I think you have to be really careful how you phrase your no or your no thank you. Yes. For instance, if you told your friends, I'm sorry, I've already used all of, all of my allocated uh, fun money or my restaurant money or, you know, whatever, whatever you call that category <laughs> where you're going out and hanging out with friends. Uh, I've used that all up this month, but I'd be happy to go out with you next month rather mm -hmm. than I got to live on $7 a week. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't be saying it that way because your mindset and the words that come out of your mouth yeah they will frame how you deal with your finances. So make sure that whatever you do, it is a positive spin yes. and it's not a negative spin that is constantly coming from your mouth. Remember, if yeah. your friends aren't frugal, this might attract them to be interested in what you're doing. So you want to be careful not to be negative because that can turn them off if you are. Here's another con of loud budgeting. It could make it appear like you are deliberately and repeatedly living in deprivation. Mm -hmm. We've said this a lot, that oh, yeah. frugality is not equal with deprivation. Frugality yeah. should never be that way, nor should it feel that way. Frugality is a tool in your toolbox and yeah. it's a means to an end. So in other words, you're gonna deliberately choose not to spend money in one area so that you do have money available to spend in another area. But never ever, should you feel like you have to live like a hermit Not at all. and never leave your home mm -hmm. and never spend time with friends and eat ramen every <laughs> single night for supper because you are frugal. It should not feel that way or be that way. No, it's a, it's, it's a plan. It's something you're setting in place in order to handle your finances and to do a good job. And remember, we said frugality isn't living cheaply. It's living carefully. It's living with a plan to do exactly what you need to do and what you want to do with your money. You can plan to have some times to go out to eat and yeah. spend some of that money. That's that's fine. We're talking about those times when uh, friends want you to go out to eat on the spur of the moment and you didn't plan it, you didn't save for it, you didn't budget for it. That's exactly what we're talking about and how loud budgeting can help you with those particular incidents. Another way in which loud budgeting may not be a friend to you is the fact that you have to be very careful that you are not a person who is so concrete sequential, that rule follower, that rule follower, <laughs> <laughs> that everything is written in black and white. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that one of the two of us is more of a rule follower than the other one. So the rule follower will immediately say, well, no, no, we can't do that. And the problem with that is, is you can't say no all the time. Mm -hmm. I think that what you should do is find out more information before you say no, because sometimes you might be able to go online, look at the restaurant that your friends picked, see if there's anything on there that does fit within mm -hmm. your parameters of how much money you have set aside to go out and have fun with friends that month. Take that step, ask a few questions, See if there's the way that you can still go. If you can't, offer your friends an alternative. I can't meet you for dinner, but gosh, I'd love for it. If y'all want to come to my house afterwards, let's have some coffee. Uh, let's have, I'll make dessert. Let's do that together. I'd love to have you guys come over. We'll listen to some nice smooth jazz. We'll have <laughs> chats, that kind of thing. So that your friends, because your friends, let's just face it, they want to spend some time with you. That's the most and, important thing. Yeah, right and you there. need to spend time with them. Yeah. So don't be afraid to say, give me a beat here. Let me look at it. You may be able to say yes. You may have to say no, but offer alternatives to your friends. Don't just gut reaction say no. 
And once again, this is a case where you can put into your budget some spare money once a Absolutely. month to go out with your friends and to have a good time and to spend a certain amount of money at certain restaurants. You'll have to limit that a little bit because that's just part of being frugal. We put limits on everything so we have money to go across the board into every area that it needs to go. Now, if the idea of loud budgeting intrigues you, and it does intrigue us, yeah. there are some ways that we feel like you can interact with loud budgeting mm -hmm. and that you can find a balance and that you can really super effectively use loud budgeting as a tool, we mentioned it a little earlier, in your frugal toolbox to help you really gain momentum on financial goals and to save more money than you even maybe thought that you could save. We're gonna cover some of those ideas in our very next video on yep. Monday. What Hope and I have been talking about is a fairly new trend mm -hmm. that's been discussed lately, and that's loud budgeting. But there are some other trends mm -hmm. that have come up for 2024, and if you're interested in learning about some of those, we did a video on it and we got it right over there.